Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today we're uh, back on with the old Amstrad PCW and I am pleased to say, um, well I'll show you I'll show you if we uh, go up on the screen there and I've got, I'm just using this, um, this disc that I found, like I said it says copy low script on it we we'll stick that in the drive, we'll switch the power supply on now don't Bear in mind if the screen does anything daft, this uh, monitor is still playing up. Oh, there we go, it's locked now. If we look, we can see. And hopefully that will load. I still have to got to do a little bit of work on the um, video. It's not bad at all, actually. But it does have a little bit of a, a shimmer on it. I'm not 100% sure whether it's this monitor or my little um, board that I've made. So I will try it on another monitor, and uh, like I say, I will probably, uh, I will probably do a little bit more uh, work on this little um, video buffer board that I've made. It well, it is a really, really simple circuit, and I know I can uh, make it a little bit better than it is. Um, I know someone who's interested in um, perhaps building their own version of that, so I will perfect it a little bit more before I um, actually publish the circuit. Just because I want to be 100% happy, um, it's not going to. Um, kill the gate array there. I don't think it will, I think what I've actually done there with the, it's all, literally it's just two transistors and a few passives, but it acts as a video buffer, so uh, basically it's not trying to pull the whole video signal from um, the gate array there, it's buffered by that little circuit. But anyway, like I said, we do actually have um, a working Amstrad PCW, well, <laughs> we've got a working Amstrad PCW main board, keyboard and disk drive. And um, we'll go through what we thought it was. See, I suspected it was um, the disk drive down there. So what I did is, um, this isn't actually the disk drive I showed you before. This is the disk drive out of my um, CPC6128. Because I pulled the drive out of the 128, and I put the drive that I was um, using with this into my 6128, and it wouldn't read any disks. So anyway, I, I fiddled and faffed about with it, and I did manage to repair it. It was all that was wrong with it is, um, and it's my own fault. When I replaced the belt on it, on that particular type of um, drive, the PCB goes all the way along the uh, bottom of the bo uh, the bottom of the disc drive. And to get enough room to replace the belt on it, you have to actually remove that little sensor and put it to one side, and that gives you enough room to swing the board out of the way so you can put a new belt on. Then you put the sensor back in. And what I didn't do was mark exactly where the sensor was lined up. What I usually do, and what I've done in the past, is take a little marker pen. I'll show you on this one. Ah, my marker pen's over there. What I normally do when I'm doing this is I take a, um, a marker pen like this. And where the sensor is there, I just put a little bit of black, black marker on the bit of metal and on the um, sensor PCB like that. So when I put it back... I can line it up exactly with where the uh, marker mark is there and I didn't do that and that's why it wasn't reading what I had to do was get it trying to read a disc and slowly move that backwards and forwards until I got it into the right position and then it started reading discs fine but I wasn't pulling my uh, all my 6128 back apart so and as it's exactly the same disc drive um, I left that disc drive in my um, 6128 and that's all nice and set up and put back together I thought I'd just use this one in um, this project. Like I said, they're identical, really, apart from there's just a slightly different revision. This is, um, I think, this one's slightly newer. It's got a half. The PCB on this one only comes part way, and you can actually get in without quite as much faff to change the um, change the belt. So anyway, it turned out that wasn't the problem. I put a good working disk drive on here, and it still wouldn't boot. So what I did next, taking advice from um, Gadget UK, because he's um, in the past said he's worked on quite a few of these back when they were actually um, current um, computers. I must admit I worked on a few myself, but um, all the ones that I seem to work on seem to fault, um, have faults with the um, either the power supply or the um, monitor circuitry. Apart from, I think, possibly changing um, a couple of bad RAM chips, I've never really had to repair the main board. As well, Gadget UK, I think he's actually had quite a lot more experience with um, these. And he said that the um, D765AC, which is the disk drive controller IC, it's an NEC part, um, are a likely culprit. 
So I thought, fair enough. You know, it, it does seem a likely um, fault. So I whipped it out. Uh, it was a bit of fun to actually get that off the board. And I found a bit of corrosion under the board. And there was actually one trace um, severed. It looked reasonable. It looked a little bit manky. But uh, when I tried continuity on it, it was dead. So I run a little bodge wire underneath. And I put the chip back in. And yeah, I found it. And it was exactly the same. So I went through all my spares and hunted and hunted and hunted and I found, um, I don't know what I've done with it now but I found a um, D765 um, BC, not an AC and I was umming and eyeing would that be um, compatible or not because I believe the BC was used in things like the original um, IBM PS2 you know, the, um, the XT version of the um, IBM PS2 as the disk drive controller in them and obviously it's it's going to be different, but I thought it's probably close enough. I'll give it a try. And I tried that in there, and it still didn't work. It was doing exactly the same as it was before. I wonder where I've, what I've actually just done with that chip. I'm just trying to think where I've um, stashed it somewhere. Yes, there it is. So I've, uh, I do have a spare if I ever need one for an IBM um, PS2 XT PS2. Um, anyway. So I went hunting and hunting and hunting around yet more and I actually found a couple of brand new old stock um, D765 ACs and I tried both of them in it and it was still doing the same thing so I thought hmm it's going to be something else so I pulled the circuit diagram out and if I remember what it was doing it was spinning the disc but it wasn't stepping properly it wasn't actually stepping up the disc properly and looking between the drive cable here and the actual disk controller what we found is we've got um, three bits of um, 74 series logic here we have um, a 7404, um, another 7404 and a 7400 and I looked at the, 20, the 7400 this is it here now and can you see how it looks oh, let me just switch on to macro and make life easy if you see this I don't know if you can see that where it's making it out, but it just looks a little bit discoloured. And can you see on them two legs up there? It kind of looks corroded on the top of the two legs. So I thought it's worth a try. So, let me just turn you back off macro and get you back down here. So, I, uh, I whipped it out and I put a socket in its place. And I went through all my... Um, I sees and it took me a while so I actually had to go up to my other workshop and I did find a few 74 double zeros so I stuck one of them in popped a disc in and bump it booted up straight away no hesitation nothing it just fired straight up and said so that was with a uh, a grotty old copied local script disc now this does read on my um, CPC 6128. Actually, the um, disc format between the 6128 and the PCW is identical. You can format disc on a PCW, it'll read in a 6128 and vice versa. So, even though I couldn't run the software on here on my 6128, I could at least verify that the disc worked and see all the file structure on it. Like I said, that booted straight up on the um, PCW. What I'm going to do now is just a last little bit of this video. Is I've got them... Um, I've got them discs that my viewer sent me, the very kind chap that sent me the keyboard and the keyboard connector. So what I think we'll just do is we'll get the um, the CPM disc and we'll just have a go at booting up into um, CPM Plus. If I can find which disc has got CPM Plus on it. There we go. Um, I think it's is it that one. Ah, sorry, it's this one. CPM Plus. There we go. I will be making some backups of these, don't worry. Um, I just need to... Wait, in fact, what I'm going to do is... I, the next pro part of this project is going to be connecting up a 3.5-inch disk drive to it. And I think we'll... Um, we will make um, a set of boot disks for this 3.5-inch uh, um, CPM disks. But anyway, what we'll do is we'll stick that CPM... Um, we'll switch the computer off. We'll stick that CPM disk in. We'll switch back on. And let's see if this is going to boot. Let's just uh, see if we can get that screen to stop flickering. Okay. 
I'm going to get anything to come on. There we go. And as you can see, um, that's booted into CPM. Let's do a DIR. Perfect. And that booted super, super, super fast. I'm like, mega, mega fast that booted. Let's, uh, let's stick the other uh, disc in. Oh, I've got local script on the other side of that. And we've got... Let's see, Dr. Logo and help. Let's put this in, just see if we can... Um, yep, and that seems to um, load. Let's try... We'll have to uh, remember how to actually use some of this stuff. It's so, so long since I've uh, done anything with a PCW or CPM or anything like that. I'm going to have to replace this monitor as well. And it really is um, getting on the nerves. There we go. Um, I don't know what we're actually going to do with Logo, but it does... Um, it does seem to work. Let's uh, get that switched off now. So yeah, said for um, a board that cost me 99p um, and basically junk that I already had. Apart from, like I said, absolute shout out and thank you to the guy that sent me the um, PCW keyboard, the discs, and um, the keyboard connector cable there because that has actually turned this into a proper viable project. Um, what I'm planning to do, like I said, as I've just mentioned, I've actually started making up a little adapter board already. We'll be fitting a 3.5 inch um, old PC disk drive um, to this thing and we'll be um, finding a nice case for it and building it into a case. Now I've got, um, I don't know what the equipment actually was, um, I think it was something military. Um, it's basically just a rack mount kit. I'm pretty sure it come from some, a load of equipment that was all radar equipment or something like that. But it's a rather nice slim line, rather 70s looking um, case with a brushed aluminium front on it. And it's like beigey grey um, painted metal case and it's got a couple of little flip out legs on it. And it looks really nice if I can find it. I'm thinking I'll probably build this into um, that case. And I might, I'm also thinking about, I've got this. Now, this is the rotting remains of a 6128. It's actually what I pinched the disk drive um, off. I haven't got a keyboard, I haven't got the front top of the case or anything. Um, it's one that I got in a box of junk um, a long, long time ago. I am wondering whether I could also integrate this into it. So basically we have two computers in uh, one unit. It's going to be a um, Amstrad CPCW. So we'll have a, an Amstrad PCW and a um, CPC 6128 all built into the same um, computer. Hopefully sharing the same disk drives if I can... Um, actually, I've got an idea, I think, how I can figure out how I can um, get the disk drives to work on both computers and be able to switch between um, the both computers in the one case. Obviously you won't be able to... Uh, communicate between one computer and the other, or at least not for the moment. It will just be as a nice compact thing that I've got a CPC um, 6128 and a PCW all in the same little form factor um, case. Anyway, like I said, that's for the future. It may not come off, it may do. I'm certainly going to build this into that um, case, if, if at least I can find it, or I can't find that one, another nice um, case. But that's my aim goal, is to have... Um, that CPC 6128 board and this Amstrad PCW board in the same um, case and like I said sharing the same disk drives and what have you. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you enjoyed that little um, update on this project. So, uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.